I'm Matt with Main Street Medina, and it's a beautiful day here in the Medina Square. Today we're going to sit in Honey Bee Bakery and talk with some of our favorite people from around the district. Won't you join us? Well, good morning. We're here today with Eric Schultz from Antiquation. I'm going to learn a little bit more about the business and his background and kind of what makes things stick on South Court. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So what, what brought you to this little town? You know, it was kind of by accident. I honestly, I never knew I was going to open a retail store. I yeah. never had any anticipation of opening a store in Medina or, or a store in general. Yeah. My wife opened up her cupcake shop seven years ago and I was envious of her freedom to run a business the way she saw fit and I Which she has decided, no freedom anymore because no. her, her business is so busy. It is. <laughs> it's funny, it looked great on the outside. You go sure. in and you realize how much work it really is. But but it's all for us, which is great. Yeah. And that, that makes it worth every second of time that we put into it. But I ultimately kind of stumbled upon a space, and I really liked the space, and yeah. it wasn't going to be used for anything, and I couldn't bear the idea of it being covered over and just never seeing the light of day again. So that ultimately drove me to start Antiquation. What's, what's your background? So I went to school for interior design and fine arts, Okay. and previously worked as a uh, display house project engineer. and. That was a lot of hours for somebody else, and this is a lot of hours yeah. for me. <laughs> what was your, for the fine arts, what was your focus? Focus was drawing and painting. Yeah. And just kind of a mixed media approach. It's, it's interesting that drawing and painting, um, but I mean, right now you're working very like raw, hard materials, yes. <laughs> wood, steel. What was that transition? So while I was in school for interior design, I played a really big role in student organizations with uh, sustainability. So I okay. was actually in charge of an organization called the USGBC, which is still a big thing with building. And we did all sorts of projects while we were in school focusing on how to reuse and uh, use sustainable practices for building design in general. Yeah. And it kind of stuck with me. So after I got out of there, I really wanted to find a way to you know, implement that into my everyday life. And so that's kind of what we started with with Antiquation, with strictly making items using reclaimed materials. Sure. It's kind of branched off from their sense, but that was what got us going. What you do right now, I mean, you make a lot of the stuff in the shop. How, how is that transitioned? You've had the shop what, four, four, five four years, years now, maybe? Yeah, four years last week, actually. So really, the focus has changed on what you have, but where do you see trends, or how do you keep current with what you do, but also be true to your creativity? Sure. So. We'll always make items to stock some of the store, uh, but what we what we started doing initially was bringing in other local artists. So we were trying to keep everything as close to home as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. But there's always other things that are tough to obtain on a smaller scale. So we wanted to sure. fill in those gaps with other unique items and just have that cool vibe, kind of complete that yeah. whole style. So we brought in some other wholesale items as well, just to fill in those gaps. I think it's it's kind of fascinating. I know you're you're not a Medina native. Neither is your wife. Mm -hmm. How did you end up here? <laughs> I mean, and here's what I love. I love seeing a young, cool, hip family, both independent business owners. You know, you, you have your son, and you guys hang out in the square, and it's cool. And I'm always wondering, <laughs> these are cool people, and I love this town, but, but how did those two things come together? So really, the reason we ended up here is uh, when Shana was getting started, she knew she wanted to start she, she was going to open a bakery. That was already decided, but yeah. the big question was where. So we literally traveled around Northeast Ohio looking for the right space. Oh, wow, okay. And we went to every quaint small town that had a circle, square, something in the middle that was <laughs> cute and kind of homeworky in a sense. Yeah, yeah. And nothing really felt right. Everything was a little too disconnected, a little bit too commercialized, or, or okay. something wasn't quite right until we came to Medina. And honestly, I, I was actually born in Medina, but outside of that, oh, really? I okay, grew up I in Akron, and the only time we ever came through Medina, it was usually just driving through, yeah. and you saw the square, for that glimpse of a second you were driving through it. I honestly never had any idea how much stuff happened on the square until we started investigating the space here. Sure. 
And once we spent a little bit of time here, we knew this was yeah. definitely the home for our The business. clouds parted, the angels yeah, sang. Exactly. And, <laughs> that's really cool. What, yeah. do, what is it that you love about this town? I mean, you guys, you, you're so invested, yeah. and so engaged in what goes on, but what, what makes this home? It's a number of things, I guess. Um, probably the biggest thing is just the atmosphere. So yeah. even outside of the people, the, the people are definitely a big part of it, but it's, um, it's like a step back in time. It's, kind of, it's yeah. a very unique space in Ohio that I think a lot of people kind of take for granted. What is it about the square that makes it unique? Like, do you have a favorite building, or when you have people come in town, you say, oh, you gotta go here, you gotta go check this out, you gotta eat this? Well, it's not really one particular thing. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's everything collectively kind of makes it a unique place to come. And, it, and we're constantly trying to sell it on friends, family, whoever, sure, and, sure. you know. We're constantly pointing out all of the features, and it's not necessarily the same set of features. And you know, <laughs> there's, there are a number of different things to be offered, and it's, yeah. it's nice to be able to come and spend a day and kind of experience it all. You know, you're not just going for one thing. You're not just going to go to high voltage and go go kart racing. You can sure. walk around the square and really enjoy all that it has to offer. Uh, I'm curious, what's your personal style? And here's my perception. <laughs> so you have this really cool, funky store with handmade, reclaimed things. But you also kind of have this hipster vibe. So I'm like, is he mid-century modern? Is he a record collector? Is it all like chippy painted stuff? What's as an interior design student? What what is your family style? <laughs> well, or is it be, it's you know, kind of whatever? It it it, it is it. It is honestly kind of whatever. Just because being in design or you know being interested in design, you're kind of constantly looking at the next thing or you're constantly looking at the old things and trying to figure out where they fit. So. I don't want to say it's a hodgepodge of all those yeah. things, but it's constantly changing. So we do, my particular approach is kind of keeping it as classic as I can okay. without making it traditional. So kind of having a modern feel with um, with classic accents so that they don't necessarily go to the wayside. As, as a kid, were you like building stuff all the time or oh, yeah. creating? <laughs> what, what led you down this path? So I was always tinkering with stuff. Okay. Um, always organizing and um, doodling and just yeah. trying to figure out things. Just making. Just whatever seemed like fun. And, and just playing around with all that stuff always seemed like a good time. Are your parents creative? My dad actually is a store planner. So he, okay. I grew up around that and he had a manufacturing facility. And so it was always a lot of fun growing up, playing in the manufacturing facility, seeing all of that stuff come to life. And yeah. Him always talking about the different things and then going and physically seeing the end result. So I kind of made me want to do something similar and kind of make my own ideas come to life. Yeah. What do you do in your free time if you ever have any? Like, <laughs> how do you how do you just relax and just enjoy being Eric? You know, outside of what we have to do for work, we really don't keep a very tight schedule for anything. So really? we try to keep it as loose as we can. So I mean, that goes <laughs> that goes for you know our days off or evenings or whatever the case. You yeah. Know. There's not a set plan for anything unless there's something we absolutely have to do. That kind of gives us freedom to just kind of unwind. We're not trying to bind to anything. You know, there's, we're not going to get stressed out if we don't make it to this or that. You know, it's just kind of we make it That's to what we can. That's actually so refreshing to hear. Because <laughs> most people are like, okay, we got to be here. We got plans. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely items on the list that we have yeah. to make it to. But but it is nice to try to keep it as fluid as possible so that we're not constantly pulling our hair out. How, how, do you, how do you find that balance between work life and home life? I mean, like I said, you guys have two stores, you have a young son, yeah. you're involved in a lot. How do you balance that? Just kind of roll with it. Just do it, just yeah. roll with it. <laughs> That's really all I can say. I mean, oh. there's, there's not really any particular approach for you. It's just kind of what it is and yeah. just take each day as it comes. What are, Most of them are good. <laughs> I'm curious, are there like dream trips that you guys have planned for your filming in the future or things that you want your son to experience? You know, so that's one thing that we don't push off to the side. As busy as we are, we still travel yeah. quite a bit. So we just took him to California for the first time. That's actually where we spent our honeymoon. So it's kind of nice to oh, cool. exp you know, expose him to that. Not that he's going to remember any of that because he's not even two yet. But right. <laughs> <laughs> but he was there. But it was nice to go out and just relax. And, and again, I mean, while we were there, there's no set plan. Mm -hmm. There's no schedule. It's just kind of go with it. And, do whatever felt right for the day. It's like easy rider, hippie, yeah. just whatever. <laughs> do you have a favorite place that you guys visit or some place that you return to often? We really enjoy California, so that yeah. was that was a nice trip to return to. Um, honestly, 
there's not really any one particular place. I mean, we love going to different cities and different remote areas, just anything that, to kind of switch it up and get a, a new experience. I'm curious, what do you collect? Do you collect anything? I feel like we always end up with things. <laughs> we, um, we have all sorts of stuff that we bring into the store, and we obviously wouldn't bring yeah. it into the store if we didn't love it, so sure. then we will end up having some of that at home as well. What do you see as the future for Medina in the historic district? Where would you like to see things go? I would love to see it continue to grow. Um, there's still, you know, a few gaps here and there in between buildings mm -hmm. and maybe businesses that are more approachable for walking traffic um, more consistently across the square. But it's growing at a rapid pace as it is, so I think my dreams are already starting to come true as, yeah. as we're watching it build up. What, I'm curious, what do your customers say about town? Everybody has something positive to say about it. I, I rarely have somebody come in and have anything negative to say. We always have that customer. But <laughs> 99% of the time, everybody is astounded at how how cool a town it is. Just yeah. it's interesting. It's, it's a step back in time, you know, especially at Christmas time when everything's lit up. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of events going on, drawing people to the square. Even if it's not buying customers and they're just in to check it out, they're always just amazed at what what there is to offer. Just the atmosphere. Yeah. Very cool. What, what's what's the future for Antiquation? Where do you where do you see taking this store? Sure. So. Right now, I keep saying we're, we're still shaping it up and kind of molding it into what it's going to become. Yeah. Like I said, when we first started, there was really no anticipation of opening anything. So right. from day one, it was just kind of like hit the ground running, figure out which direction we're headed. And so we've been filling in those gaps and kind of <clears throat> shaping it up around what made sense for the customers that are walking through the door. Um, I think once we kind of finish figuring out all of those last little pieces and parts, I would love to open up a second shop. Really? Yeah. Another antiquation or another, antiquation. another separate store with something else? Another antiquation. <laughs> yeah? Very cool. Yeah. Any plans for expanding Cupcake a Day? Possibly. There's okay. always talk. And franchise in California, so it's actually a, <laughs> right. it's a business trip, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's fantastic. Eric, thank you so much for being here today yeah, and sharing course. some of your story with us, and we look forward to seeing what you do at Antiquation. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs>